The Trump campaign is criticizing billionaire Mark Cuban for extremely insulting comments he made on The View about women who support former President Trump. You never see him around strong, intelligent women, ever. Yeah. It's just that simple. They're intimidating to him. Here is uh, the former Trump administration press secretary and uh, now governor of Arkansas, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, response. Mark Cuban just said there are no strong, intelligent women around President Trump. It's a disgusting lie. And it's pretty funny coming from Democrats who can't even tell you what a woman is. I worked for President Trump for two and a half years. Democrats tried to tear me down. President Trump empowered me and every other woman in America. Trump campaign National Press Secretary Carolyn Levitt called the comments by Cuban extremely insulting to the thousands of women who work for President Trump and the tens of millions of women who are voting for him. Mike? Few are the leftist media and pundits seem to be pulling all stops and misquoting Donald Trump. During an interview with Tucker Carlson Thursday, Trump referenced former Republican Wyoming Congresswoman Liz Cheney turned Kamala Harris supporter saying this. She's a radical war hawk. Let's put her with a rifle standing there with nine barrels shooting at her, okay? Let's see how she feels about it. You know, when the guns are trained on her face. You know, they're all war hawks when they're sitting in Washington in a nice building saying, oh, gee, Will, let's uh, send, uh, send 10,000 troops right into the mouth of the enemy. Now, CNN and others accused Trump of calling on Cheney to be shot. He's saying quite explicitly and unambiguously that Liz Cheney should be shot, should be executed by firing squad. However, if you listen to what Donald Trump really said, it was not that. Of course, it's not surprising his words would be twisted by critics so close to the election. Greg. We're now less than five days to the 2024 presidential election. Former President Donald Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris are campaigning nonstop to get the vote out. The Democrats are up against an unfamiliar foe in this year's election. Black and Hispanic voters increasingly turning away from that party. Victory News contributing correspondent Paul Petit looks at why this is happening and how it could impact who takes control of the White House next week. And an assault weapons ban. In the final stretch to the U.S. presidential election, Kamala Harris is ramping up efforts to court black and Hispanic voters. The Democrats still hold a clear lead with both groups, but recent polling shows the numbers have significantly dwindled since 2016. We are absolutely seeing an increase of, of crossover from, from minorities, whether they be Hispanic, whether they be uh, black individuals, who maybe traditionally have voted Democrat. Polls are revealing former President Donald Trump is having success in winning over black and Hispanic voters, a continuation of gains he made in 2016 and 2020. They know what life was like in the Trump administration as opposed to this Biden-Harris administration. They knew, they know that they could go in a grocery store and afford groceries. They could go to the gas pump and afford uh, gas. One New York Times and Siena poll shows Harris had 78 percent support among black voters compared to around 90 percent support for Democrats in recent elections, with men accounting for most of the drop off. They recognize there's been a lot of promises that have not been kept from Democrat leaders. I think finally the scales are falling off some of their eyes, much the same as when Saul was converted to Paul, and they're starting to see truth. They're starting to see the light, and they're starting to understand that they've been taken granted for for all of these many years. That could be crucial in a race that could be decided by razor thin margins. And in those key battleground states, even modest gains among minority voters could ultimately sway the results. Of course, you're not going to flip these entire communities, but the fact that Donald Trump is leading Kamala Harris by 11 percentage points in the Hispanic community, he almost is at 50 percent. And in the uh, black community, he is almost at 20 percent. That's, that's two torpedoes, very big torpedoes, into the SS progressive socialist Marxist uh, ship. And that ship is fighting to stay afloat in the battleground states. Former Wisconsin Governor Scott McCallum lives in a battleground state. He says he's seeing something playing out there similar to what is happening across the country. Urban areas with rapidly growing populations that include middle class, family oriented Hispanics and blacks increasingly disenfranchised with a Democratic establishment. It's an interesting flip where Democrats used to be the party of the working people is now the Republicans are a party of the working people. The, the big shots don't understand these aren't automatic Democrats. They're working. 
they're frustrated with what's going on. Well, like Ronald Reagan once said, I didn't leave the Democrat Party, the Democrat Party left me. Bishop E.W. Jackson says it's not just the Democratic Party they're leaving, it's the candidate. I think it's the lack of substance. Look, they, they listen to her, and aside from the word salads, there's nothing there. Both Hispanic and black voters have also expressed concern about the Harris-Biden open border policies and a social agenda contrary to their own views around human sexuality and gender identity. And I think people are realizing, I don't want to be a part of the party of extremism. I want to be a part of a party that shows it possesses the common sense and wisdom of the American people. And, and right now, frankly, that's the Republican Party, not Democrats. A large number of black male voters took issue with a president they once embraced when he famously chastised them if they didn't vote for Harris. Coming up with all kinds of reasons and excuses. I've got a problem with that because, because part of it makes me think, I'm not speaking to men directly, part of it makes me think that, well, you just aren't feeling the idea of having a woman as president. Mm -hmm. It's offensive, it's condescending, uh, and it just shows that this is more so about him than anything else. Who is he to tell me that my skin color should dictate, you know, my principles and values? It's an insult, because it's as if we don't see reality that is slapping us in the face. The impact of all that has Harris scrambling with desperate countermeasures. She recently released a list of proposals her campaign dubbed a opportunity agenda for black men. But as the polls with minority voters have been showing, that ship has sailed. I think a lot of what's happened is not just that Democrats are no longer the party of the working class. I think it's that a lot of Americans are seeing through this, this phony scam they've been playing now for decades, and it's just kind of worn thin enough that people recognize you're not fighting for the individual, you're fighting for the elite. For Victory News, I'm Paul Petit.